All right, good evening, happy Wednesday, everybody. I'll turn the echo box down. Smile for the camera. We got the lights on. Here we go. It is another Project Healing Water special. Yep, that's right. Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing. Um, if you don't know much about it, go ahead and check them out. Uh, they have a wonderful website, Facebook groups, or Facebook page. Um, yeah. Uh, connecting Veterans and Fly Fishing. Um, and we were doing a, such a great, great job. Um, things were just moving so fast uh, before COVID happened. And because of that, here we are coming to you live from my basement. Uh, we used to meet in the basement. Um, sometimes we're in the basement, sometimes we're on the second floor. We did move around a couple of times uh, out at the St. Cloud uh, VA Hospital. I want to move my camera actually over. Oof, there we go. A little bit, a little bit easier for me to see. Okay. Anyway, so. We used to meet there, and now we meet here. Uh, everything is um, online, and we've been doing these uh, live streams here every Wednesday from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, since March, I don't know, it's been six more than six months now. Um, and here we are, what are we at? October the 7th, October 7th. Um, and every time I say the word October, it reminds me um, that I really want to watch uh, the movie Hunt for the Red October. That's such a good movie. Anyways, uh, tonight we're going to be tying a fly. Um, it's not often, and it's not like I really need the book for this one, um, but I was trying to think of a pattern to tie for this week, and I know we're maybe ta I kicking around synthetic streamers, um, but I came across this fly and I was like, you know, I just have to bring it to my people. And I've tied it before and I think I, I, I think I might even actually already have a video out on how to tie this. Um, but I'm flipping through, uh, the art of tying the bass fly. Get it? And they, they try to put a play of words on it with, uh, uh, uh a musical instrument behind it, presuming uh, that it's actually a bass and if it is a bass it's a uh, six string bass and the strings look awfully skinny like it's more like a guitar I know they do make six string basses but I mean if they're gonna put the play of words and throw a, an, a musical instrument um, underneath all of that and say the art of tying bass flies at least they could do is throw a bass underneath it I don't know but uh, so anyways, tonight we are going to be tying a fly out of this book called the Assam Dragon. And it uh, replicates a dragonfly nymph, more or less. Yeah, um, yeah. it's a slow-moving fly. It's a slow-stripping fly. It's not a, a quick-moving darting minnow or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's some good stuff. So we're going to tie a few of these up. I'm going to tie one um, kind of... Uh, with more or less a uh, traditional color pattern um, and we'll go from there because imagination is the limitation is your only limitation um, let's see here we'll give it a couple minutes it looks like we only got a couple of people tuned in tonight we got to get our friends on board here hit that share button everybody hit that share button uh, we do this every Wednesday night from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock for a couple of hours uh, we are going to cut it a little bit short tonight. I do want to uh, have a little bit of time to transition um, myself into the vice presidential uh, debate, com uh, which will be happening right after this live stream. So let's jump to it. Let's slide on over to the bench. Uh, feel free to uh, say hi in the chat. I always do my best. Uh, to monitor what's going on in the chat and we can do that a by looking at the computer behind my shoulder or through this antique iPod it's a model a1509 whatever that means um, maybe that's the year it was manufactured 1509 I don't know this stuff is old stuff now anyways 
let's go ahead and slide over to the bench and we'll just start tying some of these flies up and uh, we'll get people to join in as we move on through the night. So we're going to jump right over and check this out. That is a, uh, I had to tie one, at least one, before I uh, reminded myself. I had to do a reminder of uh, how to tie this. Not, not like it's a super complex, overcomplicated uh, fly to tie. Um, which is one of the things I love about it, is its simplicity. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, like always, we... Oh, I lost my page in my little book. Um, I'll give you what the, the recipe calls for a heavy wire hook, uh, one or two X long, size two through 10. Uh, weight is a lead wire optional, brown, they say a three out thread body, a strip of brown dyed rabbit fur on the hide, and a grizzly hackle up front, dyed brown. So that's what we got going on. Um, Individual colors, uh, variations, uh, what you have might come out just a little bit different. And we're going to have some fun with this tonight. So thank you all for uh, tuning in, and we're going to get this started. Um, I have, I'm using a slightly uh, different hook. It's a little bit longer shank hook than um, uh, one or two X long. What I have in the vise is actually a uh, three, not one, not two, but three, three X long. And we're tying these on the Moonlits tonight. These are Moonlit ML057s. They are one X strong, three X long, size D. I like them because they're a nice, good, solid, stout hook. And they're nice and long. I like these the three X long in here. And so I guess yeah, I guess we could uh, if you want to get nitpicky, we can call it a variation. Um, and lead wire optional for weight. We'll check this out for optional. We're actually going to come in with some lead free wire. How's that for an option? But you didn't see that coming. <clears throat> We actually, I received a, I get, I'm sure like most of you, I receive a, uh, uh, a newsletter from my county. And the county here in Minnesota, we have 10,000 plus lakes, right? Let's get our wire started. We're going to start it behind, or not behind, but right about in line with the, uh, with the barb of the hook. And I'm going to counter wrap, wrap backwards towards the front. And stop, give it a little compression. And I'm not going to quite take it all the way to the eye. Maybe two eye lengths back and uh, make it easy on myself. Use my little fancy little wire nippers. Sometimes all it takes is the right tool for the right job. All right, we'll get our thread. And the thread that I'm going to be using tonight is, where did I put it? Da, 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 da. I'm using a Danville's 210 Denier Flymasters Plus. This nice little tan. We're getting towards the end of it. So sometimes when you get towards the end of things, you either A, want to conserve it forever, or B, send it, use it. All right, I'm going to start my thread up front, take a couple of wraps, and then as I'm wrapping, I'm going to wrap into that wire, trapping this thread, the tag end, working it all the way back and as you can see I don't know if you can see or not but you can see I can see uh, the wire is actually spacing out just a little bit and that's on account of this thread getting wrapped in between and just nice and simple give it a little compression 
So what that did is that took that tag end and it actually wove that over top and in between all that thread. It's a beautiful thing, I think. That's how I like to get my uh, weighted wires on. And then I can wrap forward once. Capture all that again. I'm going to build a small little dam. It's like setting the parking brake up front. Work our thread all the way back towards the rear one last time. And that's it. We have a weighted wire on. All right, so we need our rabbit hair. And I have, where did I put it? That's the name of the game is where did I put it? I think this will be long enough. Just a standard uh, rabbit strip. I think I'm going to need a little bit more length. I don't trust that that's going to be long enough for that case. I'm going to go with this one because it has just an, about an eighth inch longer, quarter inch longer. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to take notice. This is the way the, the grain is laying right to left and we're going to trim off just a little tough just like that we're going to set this on the back side upside down that's hide side up fuzzy side down right where that uh, weighted wire that lead free wraps and we'll work our way towards the bend of the hook this is upside down Nice tight rocking wraps. And we'll wrap our thread forward. Mind the tip of that hook, I knocked it and I can see the damage. There we go. And we're gonna stop about two eye lengths behind the eye. Eye eye, and that's gonna leave us a little bit of room uh, for our hackle up front. Next, we're going to want to uh, secure our galoo. And what I found was some actual bona fide a zap a gap. Zap a gap. Zap a gap. Some good old CA glue. Normally, I personally, um, if I had the, the choice, and I didn't just um, get this out of my local bin. I try to find the gel control. That's just my personal preference. I like the gel controls because um, it just doesn't run as fast. So let's go ahead and add just a little light layer, just the lightest layer. It doesn't take much. This Zappa Gap is good. All right, we're going to palmer this forward with touching wraps, They're slightly overlapping. I like to go slightly overlapping and I'm going to make sure you keep the fur out of the glue. Take your time. Oh boy, push down too hard on that vise. And as I'm wrapping, I'm giving the um, everything a pinch with my back hand, with my left hand. Just making sure it stays into that glue. Just keeping it clear from getting trapped in the next wrap. And if you do feel a little bit of glue on your fingers, just quick rub them together. Just got to be careful. I think I'm going to get <laughs> extremely lucky with my length here. If not, I'm just actually just a touch. Just a touch short. Look at that. We actually just shorted ourselves about maybe a half a wrap. We'll, we'll make sure we capture that. That'll work. 
a little bit of extra room up front to work with, but that's not going to be the end of the world. Remember, you have a brand new uh, hook there, so sometimes we just got to hit it, hit it with the brush. And just a little, maybe I don't know. We'll see what happens, what it looks like once we get our hackle and head on there. So we're going to kind of call this the standard, if you will. Kind of a standard, kind of expected color. Color scheme, just kind of a light tan, brownish. Uh, let's find our brown grizzly hackle. This is a big old, uh, I think a big old saddle hackle. This one's this one will do us just fine. All right. Yeah. Go ahead and strip off the fluff. Get rid of that. We're gonna hang on to that. We're gonna use that rest of that handle because we're gonna tie it in by the tip. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I read that wrong. Alright, as I was. We're going to tie this in a little bit differently. I'll get rid of that. And I'm going to make my little notch like I normally do. My little high and tight. Because I don't know if the light refracts or whatnot. Alright. So we're tying this uh, bottom side out with the butt towards the rear. Bottom side out with the butt towards the rear. All right, synchronize your watches. It's hackle time. All right, so that leaves the top side of the feather forward as we uh, palm this forward. Or not forward, but towards the rear to where our thread is. Work our way back. Maybe one more, two more. We got the feather. Might as well use it. Here we go. Lock that off with a couple of wraps. Oh, we broke that off, so hopefully that'll stay. All right. I'm going to spin my thread forward. And I'm going to work my thread through all that carefully. Try not to lock any of that down. Fold those fibers back. We're going to wrap on top of that just a little bit. We don't want to wrap on top of all of them, but just a little bit, just enough to lock in that front end just a touch. Actually, I think that's going to be fantastic. We'll finish this off with a whip finish. for the Assam Dragon. Give it a little brush brush. And that's with a... And, and obviously you have a million varieties of rabbit hair to choose from. Um, and there's this 
you know, infinite number of types of hackle you could throw up front. Um, but you get that sucker in the water and give us some slow twitches, some slow retrieves. Um, you're just going to drive them nutsos, especially when there's a dragonfly hatch happening. At least when the nymphs are out there swimming. Let's add uh, some secret sauce up front and go from there. Mr. Monkey approves the bench monkey. One little drop. This is Sally Hansen's hard as nails. The good stuff, you know what I'm saying? Oh boy. Keep it out of the hackle. Come on, AA Ron. So, this is, in my opinion, I think this is pretty close to our good friend Dave's. Uh, fly of the day. Um, what it's missing from the fly of the day is the tail. Um, and uh, the fly of the day also is comprised with a cross cut and then um, some sort of hackle up front. Actually, I do have a fly of the day. So that's the difference between a fly of the day and the Assam dragon. This is magic. This is these are both wonderful bass patterns. So bada boom bada bing. Let the line sing. Let's go ahead and let's take a little pause for the cause here. Check in with the peoples. We got, what do we got? Five, six people tuned in tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Josh. Good evening, Richard. Glad you guys are able to tune in tonight. Let's see if we can't get the old face hole camera. Camera one, camera one. Come in, camera one. Let's do a picture, picture, camera one. Copy that, red leader. Let's go. slurp all right so how we doing let's check in how's everybody doing i know we got josh we know we got richard um how you guys doing uh we're halfway through the week it's hump day it's hump day you know when did when did that all right old timers i'm calling you out calling you out when did uh the term uh, hump day become a thing was that a thing back in the day, day? Or was that kind of something that came out of the woodworks um, in my recent memories? I don't know. I don't remember any kind of uh, uh, hump day propaganda happening back in the day. I don't know. Dad's hitting the white wiver tomorrow, and he's fishing for Solomon. Nice. Nice. Um, best of luck to you. Tight lines on the White River. And that's in um, Michigan. I have yet to... I don't know. It takes it takes a little courage uh, to venture to new waters sometimes. Let's talk about that. Courage to venture to new waters especially trying to go at it solo that's to me it's very nerve-wracking it's very scary especially if it's kind of any kind of fast moving water if it has any kind of reach out and grab you kind of power and that's virtually every water any every any and every water is dangerous it's like it's like being in a lat being on a ladder you know you can die falling off of the lowest rung on the ladder um so 1965, I take it you Googled it. So Hump Day's been around since 1965. It sounds like that would have been a hippity-dippity uh, uh, 60s revolutionary uh, stick-it-to-the-man uh, thing. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? 
Let's tie another fly. That's what I do know. I'll stick with what I do know, and that's tying flies. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and... <laughs> I'm feeling good today. It's It's been pretty good. I've been doing uh, some good hustle, some good hard work. I'm going to switch my camera back over. Get my face out of here. So we'll just get this one off to the side. So now I got, oh, got two, two like that. Um, too similar of this style. Where's my cork bin? I really like these. And they've been, uh, they've actually have been fairly productive for me on the water too. How to do it with the wide side on the bottom so it actually helps hold it up and out of the way. All right, let's get another hook in the vise. Another hook in the vise. That's where it all begins. Well, as we established uh, a couple weeks ago, that um, it is possible to tie a fly without a vise. Although I will say it is much, much easier to tie it with a vise. All right, let's see here. Wire, let's find our wire. Our hook uh, again tonight, if you're just joining us, is a, uh, it's a streamer hook. It's a Moonlit ML057. It is a two or a one X strong, three X long. Uh, recipe in my book uh, calls for a 1 to 2x long, um, and I snuck up on it with a 3x long. Um, you can not tell anybody or tell everybody. It's up to you. Uh, let's go ahead and get our wire. Weighted wire is optional. I have uh, tied this both ways. Um, and I have found that the uh, weighted wire definitely helps. Um, the lead wire is going to get you more density, more weight uh, per uh, per unit. Um, but I really, really try to use lead free if, if possible. Um, and I know that knowing that I am actually sacrificing um, density. Uh, let's go ahead and. Get that started. All right, we'll work our way about from the tip of the hook. Work our way forward to a few eye lengths behind the eye. Eye, eye. Pause there, give that a little compression. All right. That looks good. You can do you the helicopter method, or you can come in with your fancy wire snippers. I like my little wire nippers. That's how I roll. Individual results may vary. Avoid where prohibited. Not available in all stores. May be known to cause cancer in the state of California. Like everything. All right. Let's get this going. Danville's, this is a Flymasters Plus. It's a little waxy, a little wax thread. I like it. We'll start right in front of our wire. A few wraps. And then we'll wrap right on top of and into that wire and we'll get some wraps in between the wire, sucking this down with it. Take that all the way to the rear, and we'll give that a little pinch. That really keeps that from spinning. I think it lasses it down, really kind of lashes. Um, actually gets a quality uh, bite 
because in between every wrap you're making contact with thread to uh, shank of the hook. So let's wrap our thread forward once. I do it at a slight angle, about kind of the opposite of the angle going this way. I'm wrapping my thread about at that opposite angle if you see what I'm saying. If you see what I'm saying, if you're saying what I'm seeing, I don't know. Build a small dam up front and that's it. The wire is on. Can anybody guess where that's going? Nowhere. That's where. All right, let's get the thread back to the rear. Running down to the the final straw on this uh, spool of thread again. Seems to be a reoccurring um, issue I have from time to time. All right, so we need to uh, pick out our, uh, our rabbit strip, our zonker. And this one, we're going to stray off the pattern a wee little bit. I kind of have this rusty, rusty red. And we know fish things that are kind of reddish. And there's our end. And I'm just going to trim just a little bit off. That's going to get that little patch of hide that much closer to the actual shank of the hook. When we flip this over and tie it in upside down. And I start right behind that wire. That way when I wrap forward, take my thread right to the bend. That way when I um, wrap everything forward, it's nice and even, or at least close to it. The transition is negligible. Negligible. I say that word five times fast. Negligible, negligible, negligible. All right. And we know we got plenty of length on this. Because last time we cut it exactly. We had nothing to trim off. And that's okay. That's okay with me. All right, let's kind of get this cleaned up a little bit, get this ready to go. Looks like it's been bouncing around in the back of a Buick for 20 years. All right. Let's get a little dab of glue -ia. We're going to be using our Zap A Gap Danger Bonds Skin and Eyes and Seconds. So, without violating HIPAA, I know a person who accidentally, accidentally mistaken a thing of uh, Zapagap. I don't know if it was Zapagap or something similar, some sort of uh, CA glue, and mistaken it for an eyedropper because the bottles were so similar. At no fault of the person, um, but man, talk about scary, huh? So keep an eye on your bottles of, uh, of glue and uh, always be ready to call for help. Full recovery, full recovery. Lessons were learned. To not do that again. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and palmer this forward. Nice and carefully. Keep the fur out of the glue. Keep your fingers out of the glue. And we'll keep that nice and tight. Ever so sli ever so slightly overlapping. It's just not just like a tick more than touching. That's what we're looking for. And on this back hand, after I pull the fur back, I give it a little squeeze. That way, we know we got some good contact. With that glue. So I've got the fruit flavor shine of orange, cherry, lemon, and lime. Let's hear some... Uh, some color ideas 
you would like to see me try tonight. I really like this rusty red. Kind of did the standard right off the gate. This will be my last wrap. Okay, we're going to hold that up to the right. I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. I feel like we're just a little too far forward with this, but we'll be all right. Give that a nice close trim. And I said we'll give that a nice close trim. There we go. All right, I want to work my way back away from that eye of the hook a little bit. Boy, that turned out kind of cool. How about that fur ball, huh? Reminds me of a Furby. Or a, not a Furby, but a, a treble. Nice. Alright, let's find ourselves an appropriate hackle to throw up front. We might just go with the same pack. Stick with that same brown. I like that brown up front. This brown grizzle. Nice big thick soupy one. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at the, look at the, look at the action on that. We're gonna go big on this. Red and white, chartreuse, and black. Those are some golden standard suggestions right there, if I've ever heard one. Let's go just a little bit less out of that fluff. All right, let's see what kind of damage we can do with this. I tied it uh, top side or the bottom top side of the feather is down and towards the front. And when we palmer it, um, theoretically we should have a good flipperoo there. So let's go ahead and uh, attach our apparatus, our hackle pliers, to the hackle tip because tackle time. They work. Absolutely. If it's not broken, why fix it? Working our way from the front to the rear. We're going to keep the twist out of there. We still want to maintain the top side of that feather facing forward. Here we go. And what happens here is these shorter barbs kind of will help prop up the other barbs. Lock that down nice and tight. And let's give it a quick trim. All right, I'm gonna spin my thread forward, clockwise. Kind of skinny it up a little bit. So I can work it through 
my hackle, working it way forward. I'm trying not to trap anything. As I say that, I trap a big batch of it. All right. Let's go ahead and mash and mush some of that back and down. And we're going to build a small head up front. And we're just going to trap the first small little batch of hackle, which will kind of fold it down instead of keeping it flared all the way out. Yes, 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 yes. Finish with a whip finish. Ooh, a black and purple. Let's see what we can do about that. I kind of like that color combo. Black and purple. Kind of reminds me of a, I don't know, for whatever reason, when I think of a black and blue, or black and brown, or not a black and blue, a black and blue or a black and purple. It's like I want to call it the bruiser. I don't know why. Here we go. We like that. Ta-da! All right, let's grab a little dab of gluia. We'll throw our insurance policy on there, and that's going to be some uh, some Sally Hansons. Just add water to that bad mamma jamma right there, huh? I like it. I really like that one. That's that's a good color combination. Let's where'd my head cement go? Just a little dab of glue ya. Work it into that there thread. And it'll be all good. Pretty easy fly to tie. A little bit of optional weight. Uh, rabbit and hackle. That's what I love about some of these. That's what I love about flies, man. Sometimes they can just be so simple and so, I don't know. It makes sense. It just makes sense sometimes how... How much sense it makes. Trying to adjust my button. There we go. Anyway, so I've got a few more tuned in here tonight. Let's check in. How we doing out there? Awfully quiet in the chat. We got a color, couple color combinations to suggestions. We're gonna see if we can't dive into some of those. All right, let's go ahead and set this one off to the side. Next to his friend. Sorry about that, a tickle in my throat. All right, let's do... Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This one will be good. Let's see if we got a piece that's already cut. We're gonna. We talked about a purple. We talked about purple. Let's do that purple one. Did I just find a hook on the floor? I don't know. Nope. Thank goodness. Sometimes when you're just sitting there and you feel something on your foot, it's like, wait a minute. Was that a hook? I hope not. All right, we're gonna go with this kind of a pinkish, purplish. It is on fireish. If I can get a decent scrap strap, let's see here. You know what? We're gonna make it work. If I can't get this piece out. How is it sometimes when you open a Ziploc bag, 
No matter which way you pull it, you're closing it. All right, we're gonna go with that. Is that? Ooh. And then sometimes when all you have are just tiny, teeny, tiny little scripty scraps. All right, we'll go with this one. All right. I know you guys are just seeing a green screen with the camera, but it is what it is right now. Here we go. Here's our hooks. Moonlit ML057. It's a nice big long streamer hook. Alright, let's add some weight. Wait, there we go. Wait, I like to use uh, lead free whenever possible. Lead free 0 0.025. Lead free. Save the fish. Save the environment. Lead's, lead's not good. Not good for the environment. It's a good weight. It's great for weight. Super dense. cheap. That's also the operative. Relatively cheap. As an in inexpensive. That looks good. Let's go ahead and trim that off. So I got a lot of leaves done over the last couple of weeks, which was a lot of work. All right, we need to switch threads. We're gonna switch to a, nope, that's the wrong label. Let's go with something. Da, 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 da. That's a, a da, 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 da. There we go. We are at the final, we're at the final snort of that. I think we can, I think we'll be able to get it out of there. We'll come close. We'll be very methodical about it. Work our thread through there. And just like that. Bada boom, bada bing. Just a tiny little tag end. We'll build our bump. We'll run our thread forward. Build a dam up front. And then we're ready to tie in our webbit. Yeah, I think I'll have just enough. I think I'll have just enough thread. So this is my patch that I'm working off of. So obviously this is like the very kind of uneven, ugly cut of this little patch. But I'm going to make it work. Keep that for dubbing. You ever seen a rabbit like this? Okay, so let's think about this. We want to tie this in like this. So when we wrap the cross cuts towards the rear. So at this end of the deal, let's go ahead and trim some of this fuzz off. Not much. Nice and close to the hide, though. Maybe just a little bit more. There we go. All right, so let's tie this upside down, outside up, bottom side in. Inside out. There we go. Get that tied in there nice and tight. And then we'll advance our thread forward. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that. Now this is not going to want to try to... This might try to fight me the whole time. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee first, hit my moot button. All 
All right, let's add our dab of glue, a little bit of zappa gap. And to prolong the life of your zappa gap, keep it cold. Keep it in the freezer. So I've been told. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap this forward. Now this is a cross cut, so this is actually gonna lay just a little bit differently. Let's get ourselves through that wide part. Really pinch it on there, let it soak into that glue. So being the color scheme that it is now, I, I really don't think you could really call it an Assam dragon. I mean, it's tied the same, I suppose, but here we are using this wonderful color combination. One or two more wraps. That's us right there. That is us on the bus. The next one's going to have to be uh, chartreuse out of necessity because that's where our thread is. Boy, oh boy. I'll fluff that out. Where's our brush? There it is. All right, let's see if we can't find ourselves a nice, decent hackle for that. thinking I'm just going to have to go with some black, this big black saddle hackle that I got. I like using that rooster, but saddle it shall be for meow. This would be a good one for that one. A little lemon lime. Because I want the size out of it. Upside down, inside out. Let's synchronize up. It's hackle time, ladies and gentlemen. It is hackle time. It's kind of my favorite time. All right, we're gonna work our way from the front to the rear.
I was kind of skeptical about this technique when I was first reading about it. I'm tying it in like this, but I really like the way it worked out. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Tenkara uh, style. Oh, we lost it. We lost it. Stop the madness. Oh, geez. All right. That was my opportunity to silently swear in my own mind. Who wants to guess what word I said? No, don't type it. Don't type it. I said, it's such a nice day outside. So I've been working on a, a raised uh, flower garden, garden bed, because my father-in-law is going to be shipping me a uh, cover for it that he's engineered. Super excited to get my hands on this. Um, that way I can hopefully... Uh, in theory, hopefully, uh, grow some lettuce or some other, possibly some other vegetables uh, this winter. I have a winter harvest. Okay, a couple of locking wraps. And spin my thread clockwise. While that's spinning, I'll give that a little trim. And then we'll just work our thread through that hackle. Right behind the eye of the hook. Fold that back and we'll build a small little head up front. Wrapping onto that hackle just a little bit. Maybe a half a... No more than an eye's length back. Thread head there. whip finish. Just like that. One, two, tray. Nice and tight. And that's it. And that's it. That is the end of that. I'm not going to bother starting to fly that wee bit of thread left. To the scrap yard, to the bone yard you go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. I've got a dozen or so that I've at least remembered to save over the years. All right, and let's go ahead and give that a little quick brush. Boy, oh boy. Uh, you know, if that doesn't get their attention, I don't know what will. I don't know. I really don't know. All right, let's add a little dab of glue up front. Just a little bit of insurance policy. Called Sally Hansen's. She's my insurance adjuster. She's my agent. dab on the bodkin and we'll get right in there bloop 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 there we go all right I like that I really like that color combination. I mean, purple, pink, and black. Definitely looks fuzzy. Definitely looks fuzzy. Let's grab another cork. All right, so we kind of have, we're trying, we, what we did is we were, we're slowly cranking up the volume. All right, next is full volume. <laughs> full volume coming up next. All right, 
Moonlit ML057, any old streamer hook. Anywhere from 10 to 2, 2 to 10. Um, 1x long, 2x long, and in my case, I went a little bit longer with a 3x long. Um, I like the longer shanked hook sometimes. Um, let's go ahead and get some weight on this. Our weight, we're going to be adding some lead free. I love how they specify that it's a round wire. I'm trying to think of any other shaped wire that I've ever come across. I mean, that, that would be a tinsel. All right, out there, what other shaped wire is there other than um, round wire? I can't think of what other shape a wire would come in. Square? Oval? I don't know. Questions we can ponder while we sit and tie our flies. Well, everybody asks why, I ask why not. Why not? All right, let's get our thread on. Like I said, we're going full volume on this one. And I, I think I might just do a chartreuse and chartreuse. Maybe a chartreuse in black. Flat wire. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. it it's not a flat wire then. It's, it should be a ribbon, shouldn't it? A flat wire would be a ribbon. A ribbon of, like, I'm thinking like a steel ribbon. Yeah, but maybe that's, I don't know. I've also spent a long time trying to figure out the difference between a seed and a nut. Lots of similarities, but what's the main difference? I don't know. Questions we ask. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's give that a couple of reps back there. Build our little dam. That's it. You know where that's going? Nowhere. That's where. All right, let's see here. This has got a little, little black to it, just a little black tint to it. Alright, we're gonna st strip off or trim off a little last little tuff there. Or a little, call that the tie in tuff. See ya. I'll make a nice little dub later. Tie this in upside down, bottom side up. If you were laying grass, if you were laying sod, you'd be doing it wrong. Nice and tight. So there's really no sense of going bananas trying to wrap the lead down or the lead free wire down, your weighted wire down um, at the beginning, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth three, four times because we just went over it going towards the back and we went over it one last time going forward. And I'll be darned if that thing. Isn't pert near all the way covered. Pert near, not plum. Let's go back just a little bit. 
There's a little game called Don't Crowd the Eye. Don't Crowd the Eye. And it's a game that takes practice. Um, it sounds easier than actually done. I get it. Don't crowd the eye. So we'll leave ourselves a couple eyes, thanks. All right. And this is back to just a regular standard cut um, rabbit zonker strip. And we'll do our dernedest to keep it out of the glue. Except that's the back hide. The hide side. Yeah, buddy. It takes practice. Keep your fingers out of the glue. That's 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 the name of the game at this point. Keep your fingers out of the glue and keep the the hair out of the glue. Here's another one. It's all What's the difference between fur and hair? Is all hair fur? Or is all fur hair? I don't know. I don't know these things. Oh, we got a little, little glue on the finger there. That's all right. I don't have anything planned for next week anyways. Glued to the vise. Glued to my work. All right. Maybe one last wrap after that. I like this one. This one's coming out pretty darn slick too. And lock this one off. Give that the trim of its life. Nice and close. Oh yeah. Boy, Dave, I don't know how you handle that wind today. It sure seemed, at least it was windy on the east side of town. You must have sought refuge, have a secret spot out of the wind, because it was just blowing it today. Yeah, exactly, Dave. Throw a tail on it, and it is exactly, exactly close to a fly of the day. Um, needs a tail, needs some flash. That'd be a, a marabou tail. And you need the mink. Can't just do rabbit. Can't do just rabbit. All right, so my hackle here. Hmm. Give this a try. That's got some texture to it. That's got some color to it. Look at this one. One of a kind. Upside up. 
or inside out, ups, downside, forward. Okay. It's hackle time, ladies and gentlemen. Prepare to board. Work our way back. So I know I told my Monday crowd, I'm going to tell my Project Healing Waters group. Uh, so what happened is on a uh, fly fishing Facebook group. Uh, yours truly has been banned, I've been given the boot, because I asked the question, when people are asking for a book, why do people suggest YouTube? That's not what they're asking for. I said, if, if somebody's asking for a bicycle, would you recommend a bus? Hey man, I'm looking for a bicycle. Could you recommend a bicycle? Man, you don't need a bicycle. Just ride the bus. That's not that's not what the question was. And for whatever reason, that uh, was uh, viewed as arrogant or whatever. I'm going to go clockwise with this. And I was booted off. After being a that member of that group and contributing so much... Oh well, easy come, easy go. We'll work our way forward right through there just like that. Right up front. Work our way back just a little bit, no more than a head or an eye's length. Nice and tight. The hackle wasn't quite as big as that other stuff, but I kind of like it. That's because it's got a little color to it. Yeah, it definitely needs a little bit more of a hackle. I don't know, we'll see. Just add water, right? Here we go. Oh, we gotta add our little dab of glue ya. A little dab of glue ya. Dab of dab of glue ya. Which honestly, in my my opinion, I really don't think it's a hundred percent necessary uh, with these uh, bigger flies. With all this, if if you do a proper whip finish, and you you can you can feel it lock together and lock in there, um, head cements. It's it's an insurance policy. That's that's to me. That's all it is. It's an insurance policy. Sometimes. You know, when you're at the dealer at the uh, blackjack table and the dealer asks you, would you like insurance? You can say no. If you're playing the game of life, and then at the very beginning, would you like to buy insurance? You can say no. Might pay for it later. Um... You know, I guess in general, in most things in life, it's always good to get insurance. Sometimes. I don't know. There's always that rental car insurance. Would you like insurance? I don't know, man. I don't know. To be or not to be. So there's... Or if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Dragon.
questions, comments, concerns? How we doing? I'll get my little face hole up there. There we go. Now we can see me. Now I can see you. I can't see you. Don't worry. But we are watching. No, that's not my job. That's Big Brother's job. Big Brother. Big Brother's watching you. <laughs> hmm. So. That is the Assam Dragon. That was out of my Bass Fly book. A lot of a lot of spun deer hair patterns in here. Um, bass and panfish. Uh, flies for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and panfish. Maybe we'll pick something else out out of here. Um, here's another good one. Uh, Murray's Helgramite. Um, our good friend Claude ties a great variation of that on a 60 degree jig hook with dumbbell eyes. Oh man, that sucker swims. Um, oh, this one looks fun. Maybe we'll do this one next week. The Silver Minnow, the Brass Wonder. Da -da -da -da. Wa -da 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 -da. Too easy. We'll surprise you with this one next week. I think we'll do that one next week. I'll have to. I'll have to tie a couple just to uh, get a feel for it. Um, heavy wire, thread, red, uh, bead. Okay, the wing is uh, white marabou over a few strands of pearl crystal flash over gray marabou over a few strands of peacock curl. Each should be about two full lengths of hook. Hmm. Essentially a fast sinking little streamer for all kinds of panfish. I'll have to double check uh, the marabou stash. I don't think I have any... Uh, light gray. We'll have to improvise. I bet you I might even be able to just hit it with uh, hit it with my gray marker. I think that's my, what we might resort to. So let's do one more at least. I think we got time for one more of these. Um, Yeah, let's do that. Let's get one more of these down and in, in and out. Um, let's, let's see here. All right, let's pick a color. And I've got a whole, I've, I've got a whole drawer of just different colors and bags of you know this is that this is what we think this is what we just tied with ooh I kinda like the looks of this one I like these uh, two-tone two-tone blends I like this white kind of a white and orange Maybe we'll go with this one. Kind of a fire, fire engine. Let's harvest a strip of that. <coughs> Don't breathe this stuff. Wow. All right, so there's that. Let's get that started. Oh, let's get my camera flipped over. Ba -ba 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 -ba.
All right, let's get this going. Park you off to the side. Thanks to your friend. So I kind of... We're getting there. We've got some options. And then we're going to go with this one for our last one. So let's find our... Oh... We're going to go with our chartreuse thread still. I'll have to dig out the black black thread if I want to go down that road. Actually, is that a 210? That's a 140. That's kind of skinny mini. All right, hooks, here we go. For our final act, we're going to come in hot with these ML057s. And let's get that into the vise, just like so. Um, it said weight is optional, and... Uh, I don't think I would tie it without without a weight in there. Um, David mentioned, you know, how similar this is to the fly of the day, and the fly of the day is a pattern that's been well R and D'd. And I'll ask you, Dave, would you fish a fly of the day unweighted? Do you have much success with that, or is the weight almost an essential? Obviously, if you don't have any weight, and you can't, if you don't figure out a way to improvise through that, and you don't have much of a choice. But, I don't know. Sometimes you can't, um, un I mean, that's the thing, is you, you can't, once you have the fly weighted, you can't weight it. Um, and if you do uh, tie, say you're tying a batch of woolly buggers, and you have some weighted and some unweighted, you have to be able to figure out a way to tell the difference between the two, right? And a simple way to do that is just uh, different colored uh, heads, or sometimes just a different uh, collar on it. Um, it could be just as simple as leaving a little green tag of thread. Uh, something that you'll be able to distinguish, something you'll be able to notice. Um, you know, unless you're trying to pass them off or pawn them off or sell them off or trade them off to somebody. Just let let them in on your, um, your secret, uh, secret code, however you identified it. There's always different ways to kind of identify um, between, you know, different patterns. It might be a different color head cement or you smell when I'm stepping in, right, ladies and gentlemen? Alright. We'll go over that once this way. Turn and burn. The ramp. Flat my thread out a little bit for that return trip. Back to the rear end. There we go. Let's get our. And it looks like I kind of, I know I got this full length. Yeah, let's go ahead and just send it right about there. I'm going to trim a little bit of this off. Let's tie this in. 
the back side. Right about there. Fuzzy side down. That's what we're looking for there. I like that. That's as I suspected. Uh, Dave said he did try uh, without the weight, but it just it just doesn't work as well. And you know, fishing with the fly of the day, I, I just can't imagine it without the weight. Um, I mean, obviously it would just stay really close to the surface. Um, and even with the weight, uh, you know, they don't. This is not enough weight to just sink it like a rock down towards the bottom um, especially when you got current and stuff uh, you know, everything's fighting to help keep it upward um, but what do you do you add a little dab of glue and that's what we're gonna do just a little dab of glue ya all right Thin, 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 just a thinnest layer, just a thin, thin layer. Oop, that's it. And always put your cap back on because you don't want to spend too much time. What had happened? This is not wanting to spin on me. All right. Here we go fuzzy side out. Don't you know? Alright, we're just going to take our time wrapping this forward. Try not to trap any fur as we go. Keep it pulled back. And we just keep giving our hide after it's already made contact. Just give it a little uh, pinch down. this little splash of red or orange actually I would call that an orange somebody with actual color theory might correct me on that but I see that as an orange kind of a fire orange not quite an OSHA orange not a road code orange it's an orange nonetheless. And that's where we're going to stop that. Stop that madness. Fantastic. All right, let's find ourselves a hackle for this bad boy. Didn't exactly think that one all the way through. Ooh. 
This is it right here, baby. This is a rooster. Not a rooster, but this is a hen hackle. But I think this will be... I wish it was a little bit floppier. But I think it'll do. I'm trying to pick out the biggest ones. Let's do that one. Wait till you see this one. Unless there's something actually... Nope. Nope, that's going to be it. Look at that bad boy, huh? Unless... Uh, this one was a regular. Uh, the only... The question was, am I using regular or cross-cut zonker strips? And uh, the only one that was a cross-cut was the shard... No, that was the purple one. It was the only one that was chartreuse. I'm thinking I might want to just go with a regular grizzly on here. We'll go with this orange one. I got it trimmed and ready to go. All right. You know what time it is. Alright Josh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. If not, yeah, I guess it will be next week. Because Monday will be next week. Uh, we tune in. We do these uh, fly time live on Monday mornings. As well as Wednesday nights. Monday mornings is a little bit, a lot of it, uh, less informative. Not informative, but um, kind of more free-spirited. Um, here I try to at least follow some sort of something. I don't know. Let's just keep... Working our way back. Oh, son of a gun. I think we might be able to... Can we salvage it? Maybe. It might be messy. But we'll get there. Maybe... That'll be it. Secure that off. A couple locking wraps, nice and tight. And then we'll work our thread through the hackle, working our way forward. Didn't take you more than a couple, two, three, four wraps. And we'll work that all back. Alright, we'll build a small head, and that's going to be it. I 
That's a little flare ball, huh? I like that one. Bada boom, bada bang. Sometimes when I'm, you know, doing these live streams, I, I just feel like I'm babbling, babbling, babbling. And somewhere between all the BS, there's actually probably something informative in all that. Um, individual results may vary. Boy, I kind of like this one. It's not my favorite. I'm thinking maybe I could have... Yeah, I don't know. Something different. Maybe, maybe with a black hackle up front. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe a black hackle would have looked good on that. How much time we got? We got a little bit of time left. But I don't think I have enough time to crank one more out. Because I'm going to wrap this up here in about, in about, I don't know, Less than 10 minutes. I'm going to wrap this up at quarter till. Um, I need to give myself a little bit time uh, to prepare to watch the vice presidential debate. Um, you know, not discussing politics. Um, I just believe that it is um, important, at least for me, myself, and I, uh, to bear witness to... Um, what the candidates are speaking about directly. Um, and I believe that, you know, some might say the presidential debate was uh, hard to watch. I think it actually, it, it spoke volumes to me. Um, and you know what? I don't think I would ever, ever in a million years want to try to run a country. I don't know who in their right mind. You have to be half crazy to want to run for president. I mean, I've I I know what it's like to run a VFW. I know what it's like to be a uh, uh, you know a, a leader in different positions. Heck, I'm a program lead for you know here for the local project Healing Waters program. And the bigger the group, the harder it gets. And man. You know, I, I, I thought about, you know, maybe city council or something like that. But, man, you know, the reality is, is we've all done things in our past. And, you know what, I really don't want, don't need anybody trying to dig something up. That's just craziness. I mean, I, I, I'm i not saying there's skeletons in the closet or anything scary like that. But, man, just the thought of people try, trying to dig something up. Yeah. Stay away. Leave me alone. But that is kind of the fire Assam dragon. Um, so yeah, there we have it. Kind of starting with uh, you know a more traditional um, color scheme here with the um, brown. I think that might be a might kind of a natural. Um, and then we kind of progressed with the little kind of reddish hue. Kind of a rust. I like that rust color. The kind of crawdaddy. That is a crawdad. Crawdad rust. We got our. So that's the cross cut. The cross cut, it lays a little bit flatter. Um. I don't know. What's your favorite color? What's your favorite? Before we sign off, let's get our let's get our baseline. What which is your favorite out of these? We got our uh, we'll call it our natural brown. We got our rusty tan. We got chartreuse. We got our pink and purple, and we got our uh, fireball. Kind of a fire comet, white and white and orange, orange and white. But anyways. Alright, so. 
kind of catch up on the chat while we wind down and wind out. All oh, question mark. Good call, Ben. They're all winners in our books. I think so. I like them all. That natural brown, that's pretty hot too. Um, but the only way to know is to get them all out in the water. Get them in the water, fish them. I need to hit the water ASAP. Maybe, maybe the next couple of days. Um, it's, it's it's yard work. It's that hustle and bustle season right now. I take care of my yard and two other yards and the honeydew list and this and that and I can't get anything done. For somebody who has nothing to do, my plate is full. Anybody else like that? Nothing to do, but your plate is full. Excuse me. Anyways. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead. We're going to wrap it up a little bit early again tonight. Um, and I'm thinking next next week. I, I don't know. For whatever reason, this uh, silver minnow is sticking out to me. And I'm thinking I should be able to... Uh, uh, you know, it's calling for a gray marabou, and I don't have any gray marabou. And I'm thinking I should just be able to hit that with the uh, marker. We'll see. We'll see. Do I need or want any deer hide? No, I do not want or need any deer hide. I have plenty. Um, I have a I was gifted a buck and a doe um, not too long ago, a couple of winters ago, and I took the time and cleaned and tanned and um, got that all, uh, got it all cleaned up and it's nice. It's a nice deer deer hair. Um, but thank you, appreciate the offer. Belly hair, belly hair is always good. Always get your hands, keep your hands on some belly hair. Um, but anyways, we're going to wrap it up. Um, we're going to, myself, I'm going to get ready for the debate tonight. Um, if you guys are into that type of thing, um, I encourage everybody to uh, at least watch for a little bit and hear some of the talking points. Um, because, uh, you know, like all elections, um, they're important. Uh, your voice matters. Um, and I will always encourage people to... Uh, get out and uh, vote so with that being said um, thank you all for watching um, again like always I want you all to stay uh, healthy and please stay safe out there um, you know as the nights are growing longer the days are growing shorter uh, you know twilight you know bad things happen at night accidents happen at night dawn dusk uh, we're still at that temperature where people might be out on their bicycles. Keep your eyes out for the bicycles and the motorcyclists. Um, and especially with leaves out on the road, things can get a little slippery. So, you know, always just be safe out there. Um, happy tying, everybody. And yeah, sure, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace.